in a way we are creating a global class system in which the better off from origin country have better migration opportunities than ever. If we look at how migration policies have evolved over the last 50 years or so, they have become more liberal rather than more restrictive. What we've seen is very visibly Governments have targeted particular categories of migrants, particularly asylum seekers and to some extent low-skilled workers, as being the targets of the, and they've been sort of labeled the undesired migrant. And this is where everything is focusing on. But at the same time, countries have opened their borders for people who come to work, particularly more skilled people, but also for students. Actually, over the last 40 to 50 years, most countries have made it easier for families to join uh, migrants in the destination countries. So in reality, we cannot really say that migration policies have become more restrictive. There are only two categories of migrants where we have seen an increasing attempts by states to try and stop and decrease it. On the one hand, this is refugees, and on the other hand, these are low-skilled migrants. The problem with both categories is that you cannot really think them away. So if there's a major conflict breaking out, of course people will move out. And those, some of those people will appear also on the borders of wealthy countries, although that's a minority. So if you then put such big restrictions in place, people may not cross a particular border where a fence is built, but people will simply take other routes. Another category is low-skilled labor migrants, because there officially the line is, particularly in Europe, we don't need these. The reality is that in many sectors, like agriculture, construction, catering, care, both ch child care and elderly care, there's a real demand for migrant labor. So if you don't create legal instruments, which, which say you don't allow people legally in, people find other ways to come in. Hence the large number of undocumented migrants from Mexico into the US who actually work in those sectors, and the same for, for instance, North African labor migrants who've moved illegally across borders to work in countries like Italy and Spain, where there's a real demand for that type of labor. If you don't create legal rules, then those people will come in different ways. So it's a sort of uh, catch-22 situation where, you know, we try to impose controls on forms of migration that are there, that are driven by fundamental forces like labor demand and by conflict in origin areas, and which are in a way not stoppable, they're inevitable. And there is where you see the crisis narrative appearing, whereas in reality, the big majority of migrants coming to Western countries, they totally follow the rules. Total legal migration to the European Union every year is two to two and a half million people come into the EU as migrants. Many go back as well. And that is the big source. And if we look at so-called illegal sort of migration, irregular migration of labor migrants across the Mediterranean, we really talk about relatively known, low numbers. And you could say that on a global scale, current immigration policies, which are all about selection, have made it easier for the already privileged to migrate. So in a way, the current immigration policies are privileging the already privileged in origin countries. Sub-Saharan Africans in the United States are one of the best skilled migrant groups in the United States simply because poor Africans have no means in order to even make it out of their countries, let alone move to the United States. So, in a way, we are creating a global class system in which the better off from origin country have better migration opportunities than ever. If you have the right degree, a certain amount of money, it's become very easy to migrate for many groups wherever you're from. If you're poor, you don't have the qualifications. Either you can't migrate at all, or the only option left is cross borders illegally and end up in situations of marginalization and exploitation. So you could say that the current migration system is not going to reduce inequalities in the world. Actually, it rather tends to do the opposite.